Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to SAS. This is the sixth lesson out of seven lessons, and in this lesson we'll be covering basic formatting. And I recommend that you check out the previous five lessons if you haven't seen it, just so we can all be on the same page. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to be learning a number of different things in today's lesson. So we're going to be covering formatting, so we're going to be covering format, uh, label, split, and as well proc format which is one of my favorites okay let's go ahead and get started so let's just go ahead and load libraries so we're gonna go to help learning programming press ok it's gonna load a bunch of different libraries that we'll be using today so let's go to library go to finance and you're gonna see this finance table so pretty uncreative we're gonna be using a finance table within uh, or finance SAS data set within a SAS library, but regardless, let's go to proc print data equals finance dot finance. In this case, what we want to do is format the salary. So right now the salary is just numbers, nothing special there. But say for example we want to put in some commas. So we're gonna treat in that format. Let's go ahead and run it. So what you're gonna put here is you're gonna put your what you call in format, which is a style. Imagine that the style type. And then you can put the number of, of uh, in this case, digits you want. And then you're going to put dot, the number of decimal places. In this case, the and when you do commas in every case, it includes both the digits and as well the non-digit characters. So that includes the commas, the dollar signs. So it's really important that you get that right or it's going to try to truncate it so it makes it work. So you can see here, it looks good, looks interesting. Uh, if I want to change that to a dollar, and I go here, I run it. But what you'll see here is that sometimes it has a comma, sometimes it doesn't. Because if you count here, there's already nine here. So it can't include that tenth character. So let's go ahead and change this to 12. When we change it to 12, now it's a long enough string, uh, well, long enough. Yeah, long enough string, for lack of a better word, to include the commas. So that's that's good. That's interesting. Um, so if you, for example, you'd want to format regularly, but you want to include two decimal places, you can get rid of the dollar, just leave the numbers, and you can format it in that manner. So really useful, really helpful. If, for example, I want to format the name to be, to, for, for a reason, four characters long, all you have to put is the dollar sign, the number of characters, and then dot and then you can just run it and you can see here now it shrinks it down to four for whatever reason you want to want to do that uh, oftentimes you want to do it the other way especially when you're doing some length statements uh when especially when you're importing some data or you're running some ifs if and do then statement do end statements it can sometimes truncate your data based off of the which instance it is but you can check out the previous videos for an example of that so if i for example want to format the date there's a couple different options here. So I'm going to list the field and it's always follows the same syntax. So in this case, you need to declare the format option. In this case, I'm going to use date. I'm going to uh, length of it's nine and I'm going to run this and you're going to see now it's formatted into that format, which is good. If I wanted to change it, I'm not sure if there's like a shorter one. So you can see here it's truncated down even more just to accommodate for that. When I put six, if I want to put uh, day, day, month, month, year, year, and I were to put eight, for example, and run it, you're going to see it's going to put it in that format. If I want to include the full years, I need to put 10. Feel free to pause this, slow down. You're going to see four characters, see the comparison there. So really useful, really helpful. I recommend that you try it out yourself. Uh, we're going to now be moving on to the labels. Let's go ahead and define some labels within the data data step. So here I'm going to go data. I'm going to just basically take a copy of the finance data. Nothing too fancy here. Set finance, finance. And then I'm going to be declaring some labels here. So in this case, instead of it being SSN, actually let's do it this way. SSN, I'm going to make it equal to social security number just so people know what that means and i'm also going to format the name to be uh first name since that's what it appears to be and then i'm going to leave it like that and if i run it we're going to see here is that 
nothing really changes in the final format. It is changed. I have to declare that option within the proc print, but I can also go to proc contents, uh, work.finance, and then run it. And as well, I should, for sure it would have ran because it's not pointing to the right table. And let's just for contrast purposes, check out both of them. Oh. Let's check out the contents of both the original and the new SAS data set. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Data equals SAS will get you if you aren't exact. So you can see here, you can see here, this is the new one. There's no formats here besides the on the date. But if you go up here, now you have the date formats or the, the not the formats, the labels. So that's good. Good to know. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. If I want to show labels here, all I have to do is put label here. And then when I run it, perfect. I'm going to move this label, this name label down here so I can go ahead and show the split option. So I'm going to type label here, put semicolon, and then I'm going to be using the split option. Say for example, I want the first name to, to be split one line on one line on uh, first line being first and then the second line being name. So if I now run this, you're going to see you have the full format here and as well now you have the name on the second option. So really useful, pretty interesting. That's good. So let's go ahead and check out the next one, which is going to be proc format. So proc format is actually one of my most favorite ones. It's, it's really useful. So let's go proc format. And all you're doing here is declaring a format. You'll see here I didn't actually pull a data set. In this case, you're going to use value. And in this case, I'm going to call it instead of what I want is that instead of having the salary values in the data, I want to replace the salary values based off of certain ranges for whatever reason. So in this case, I'm going to go sal. I'm going to call it salary range. If if you're using a numeric one. It, you're replacing numeric with uh, these categories, then you don't need to include the dollar sign. But if you're replacing characters with characters, then you have to use the dollar sign out in front of your format name, your in format name. So in this case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in zero dash. This less than sign will mean that it's not inclusive of the 25,000. Basically, don't include it. So zero to whatever, 24,999. Uh, and they're going to call this salary one. And I'm going to then do this same thing here. Or, sorry, not the same. And I'm going to go 25,000 to 30,000. I'm going to call this salary two. I'm just going to copy this line entirely. And then I'm gonna go 30,000 to 50,000. And I'm gonna call that salary three. And then I'm gonna close that. And then I'm gonna run it. So, but no, before I run it, instead of doing this type of format for salary, I'm going to replace this with salary range dot. So now, if I run it, you're going to see here the salaries have now been replaced with these particular values. So that's it. That's all I'm going to cover. I'm going to make cover some more advanced stuff when we do our intermediate SAS. Uh, but until then, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.